I lost $200 trying to flip the Steam hardware survey PC. But you know what they say? If you learn from the experience, then you didn't lose money. You just paid life for an education. And yeah, I am they, they am I, whatever. So in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and study the Steam hardware survey PC flip, try to figure out where I went wrong, and try to give you advice so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. But before we do that, I need to get some money for some PC parts. So watch this. If you're in the market for a pre-built gaming PC, hop over to PCBros.tech. PCBros.tech has gaming PCs for every budget. Heck, even these guys can afford one. Not looking for a gaming PC? No problem, as they also have high quality merch like this giant build mat that's two feet by four feet, or this comfy hoodie that your significant other can steal from you later. Better get to. I mean, they even have extended mouse pads to finish off your gaming setup. So head over to PCBros.tech today and use code PINKYTECH4 for 4% off your order. And now, back to the show. Now for those of you who missed the Steam Hardware Survey PC, first off, how dare you? But secondly, to recap, that was an Intel 11400F with 32 gigs of DDR4, a one terabyte NVMe hard drive, a 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply. Uh, what else was in there? Uh, oh yeah, RAID Max case, uh, which had ARGB in it, and also an Intel Arc A750. We'll come back to that in a minute. So after about a month and a half of it sitting on both the local Facebook marketplace as well as on Java, I was able to finally sell that PC for $625. So all told, I lost about $175 on that flip. And that's going to lead me into that first issue, which is if you buy retail, your flip will fail. So outside of the motherboard, which I did get open box from Amazon warehouse, I bought everything else basically at retail, meaning that I had no deals and no margin. So if you want to make a good profit on flipping a PC, you've got to be able to find deals to build your profit margin. And effectively, profit margin is just the difference between what you paid for it and what you sell it for. And keep in mind, this doesn't mean buying all used components. Certainly any kind of open box deals, Amazon warehouse, used components as well, but any kind of limited time deals where you're going to get a really good deal on not just one component, but several components is going to help you have profit margin in your flip and avoid losing money. All right, so the build that I have today is going to be a Ryzen 5 3600, which I actually paid retail for, but just, just forget that particular component. Um, but it's also on a B450 motherboard, which I got for $45 open box at Micro Center, and 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM that I got for $20, once again, open box at Micro Center. So basically the motherboard and the RAM, I've already gotten half price, and that's going to allow me to have more margin in this particular flip. I also scored a really good deal on this RX 580. I got it for free from a friend when I upgraded them to a new 6750 XT. Uh, so yeah, free 99 is always a good deal on a flip. Now, one thing I didn't get a deal on was storage, but I went with the one terabyte NVMe drive, uh, the MP33 from Team Group. And I went with that because I think a one terabyte uh, NVMe drive is gonna sell a lot better than having a 512 gig drive or something like that. Plus it only cost me $40. And that leads me into tip number two. Don't be afraid to spend a little bit of extra money if it's gonna help the overall aesthetics of the build. Now, one of my favorite channels on YouTube for PC flipping is Elijah's Lab. He does incredible flips, makes insane profit, and all of his builds are absolute fire. I think the kids say that. So we need to do some stuff that's actually gonna bump up and catch the eye of anyone that happens to be looking at our ad when we're trying to sell. And to that end, I bought the DIY PC ARGB Q3 in black. And once again, I did not get a deal on this, but it's going to add some overall RGB. And also, it looks really good. It has that O11 dynamic look to it, which is really popular right now in PC flipping. On top of that, I also bought these Antec sleeve white cables for $20. Uh, once again, to add to the aesthetics. I also bought this ID Cooling SE214 XT to make the build look a little better, and also largely because the Ryzen 5 3600 didn't have a cooler when I bought it, but also don't be afraid to put a little bit of money into these builds if it's gonna make it look better, just do so within reason. Don't throw a $500 AIO on top of a PC that is not gonna cost $500. Now the other issue I think I found with this flip is that it's actually using the Intel Arc A750 for the GPU. So tip number three is avoid the controversy. You see, there's nothing wrong with an Intel A750. There are still some bugs, but it's far less than it was back when it was you know, having issues when they first released the GPU and the GPU drivers. Now, a lot of those issues have been fixed. There are still some issues with the card, 
But a lot of people just saw initially, hey, it sucks because of the drivers, and they immediately have written it off. All right, guys, so a quick little fourth wall break right here. So YouTube actually released a feature this week, and I wanted to try it out with you guys, all right? So you know the little YouTube buttons down there, you know, by the comment section, the, the hmm button and, and the hmm button, you know? Uh, so apparently now if I ask you to do something with those, you'll get a little animation there. So, so we're going to test it out real quick. Ready? Uh, so, hey, if you like this channel and you think it's been giving you value and you want to see more content, make sure you click on that subscribe button. Did you see it? Yeah, okay. Now, if you click on that subscribe button, you get a little animation. That's right. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you also. And, and then also on the other side, you know, uh, if you like this video, uh, or, or yeah, uh, if, if this video has been helping you out, make sure you hit the like button. And, and did it do it? it? And once again, click. Yeah, see? It, it, it's awesome. So, yeah, I, I, you know what, guys? You're welcome. You're welcome. The same thing goes for the 11400F. If you recall when the 11 series came out, it was called a waste of sand by Tech Jesus over at Gamers Nexus. Not exciting, seems like kind of a waste of silicon sand. And while it's true, it was a waste of sand back then because it was more expensive for basically the same performance at 10th gen, you just got PCIe Gen 4. When the prices came way down, value went back into those processors when you look at performance however the stigma around 11th gen intel is that it sucks and so it will forever suck so if you're looking to build pcs and sell them for the masses make sure you kind of stay away from any components that may have a stigma around it and that's what we've done today the 3600 and the 580 are both really good budget parts but also they have a really good reputation inside the pc community so there shouldn't be a problem there but then also i got this Ares game 650 watt or whatever power supply that was also given to me by a friend and, and that could be an issue for us here um i'm fine going with this power supply i've used it a lot before it got the bad rap and got put on the avoid list on the cult list but also it's on there because of the gamers nexus review where the efficiency rating wasn't actually where it was said to be and so the brand really just lost trust so We'll find out what happens there. I'll also leave a link down to the Gamers Nexus video on the Ares game uh, power supplies uh, so that you can take a look at it for yourself. But if you're going to do a flip, you might want to avoid that part. And if it comes to it, I'm willing to actually switch that out later. But I feel fine that they are safe power supplies, even though they may not run as efficiently as stated. And then that's going to bring me into pricing, which is one of the final tips that I have for you here today. So in my market and from what I've seen on marketplace sites, I kind of find that pricing is one of the biggest issues there. So I find that things that sell for under $500 and then things that sell for over $1,500 seem to sell pretty quickly. Uh, it kind of becomes that $600 or $650 to $1,000 where things kind of sit. Now, the Steam Hardware Survey PC, I tried to sell for $900. Once again, that did not work out at all. But this flip right here, I'm going to actually put on Facebook Marketplace for about $550. That leaves me a little bit of room to negotiate down. I expect it will sell somewhere around $500. And I'm hoping that that price point is going to allow things to actually sell very quickly. So now while I put together this PC and run the benchmarking for it, let's do a bonus tip and let's talk about the actual listing itself. All right, now the listing should actually be concise without having just an overwhelming amount of information. Effectively, you want to put in there if they're new or used parts. And then I usually put in the specs, which are the CPU, the RAM, uh, the wattage on the power supply, the GPU, obviously, and the amount of storage. Um, I don't bother putting in a bunch of information about the individual components because, quite frankly, most people don't care. They want to know how well it's going to run and whether or not it's a new or used PC so they can get some kind of life expectancy. If you're putting in things about the chipset and all these other things, they don't care about that. They, If they did, they would probably build their own PC. So make the listing concise, put in the information to try to keep them from asking too many questions about it. But if they want to know the actual brand of anything or how fast it runs, all that good stuff, they can always send you a message to ask. Next, add in your benchmarks. So something like it'll run 1080p medium settings at this FPS for a certain game and put it in there and just kind of keep it general. Don't worry about testing every single setting because it's literally impossible to do. So just try to get them an idea of how the PC is going to run in AAA titles or in uh, esports titles, etc. Just depending on what's appropriate for your listing. 
there's no use telling them to run Starfield at 4K on this PC runs at 18 FPS because you're running on a GT 550 and, and a you know Celeron processor or something from 1997. Just avoid that. All right, so here's the listing on Facebook Marketplace. I've got the specs in there. I have got the benchmarks that we ran, and that's about it. So I'm going to try to sell on Facebook Marketplace first just to avoid any kind of uh, seller fees or anything like that. And then if it hasn't sold in about a week, I'll go ahead and actually put it on Jawa and see if I can sell it there with a little bit bigger of an audience there. So now uh, everything's listed, and uh, we wait. I think i got to cut the grass. Yeah, I gotta go cut the grass. All right, guys, so it's been a couple days, and unfortunately, it hasn't sold yet, but it, it's been a couple days. Usually, it takes a week or two uh, to sell the PC. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, no, I did not mow the grass, and so uh, wife's probably not going to be happy about that, but uh, I've got to get content out, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and that you tune in. I will give you an update on the next video, how this one sold and how we did, um, but as for now, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one, and, and, and sorry for the cliffhanger, but also, uh, you know, we do what we got to. So, not sorry. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching. See you in the next one.